My dearly beloved in Christ, we celebrate today, of course, a beautiful feast of our Blessed Mother, that of her Immaculate Conception. And it has been said that the privilege of the Immaculate Conception is our Blessed Mother's dearest privilege. In other words, of all the different privileges given to her, the one that is dearest to her heart is her Immaculate Conception, and closely connected with that, her freedom from all actual sin. In other words, that our Blessed Mother was sinless every moment of her existence. She was never tainted even for one moment with the stain of original sin, and she never committed any actual sins. And this is so dear to our Blessed Mother because she knows what an ugly thing sin is, how contrary to God's holiness and purity, and how we ought to detest sin and to do everything we can to avoid it, to make every effort to stay away from occasions of sin and to conquer temptation, because we know how displeasing sin is to Almighty God. And we rejoice at this Feast of our Blessed Mother for several reasons. One of them, that the bishops of the United States chose our Blessed Mother as the patroness of our country under this title of her Immaculate Conception in 1846. And that is interesting because that was eight years before the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception was solemnly defined as a dogma of the faith by Pope Pius IX in 1854. So our Blessed Mother is the patroness under this title of our country, and we should have a great devotion to our Blessed Mother, and in particular to honor her as Americans under this title. Also, if you've ever read the story of the apparition of Our Lady at Lourdes, it is very striking when St. Bernadette asked Our Lady her name. Finally, after appearing a number of times on the 25th of March, which is the Feast of the Annunciation, Our Lady gave her name as I Am the Immaculate Conception. Of all the titles, of all the names, Our Lady identified herself with this title. And notice she didn't say, I was immaculately conceived. She said, I Am the Immaculate Conception. So what a wonderful feast, what a wonderful title. And I particularly like the the meaning of the collect of today's Mass that you read in your missals. I don't particularly like the translation from the Latin in this missal that I'm reading from, but I will read it and comment on it because the collect says so much in so few words. It is doctrinally very uh, important, and then it is also devotional. So the collect reads, Lord, thou hast prepared a worthy dwelling place for thy son by the immaculate conception of the Virgin. Grant, we pray thee, that as thou hast preserved her from all stain of sin in thy foreknowledge of his death, so we by her intercession may come to thee with pure hearts. So let's examine the collect for today's Mass and what are all the things that it tells us. First of all, that God wanted to prepare a dwelling on earth for his own son. So God the Father sent his son into the world, but the first dwelling place of that son of God was going to be in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he did not want that earthly dwelling to have ever been tainted with sin. And so he prepared a dwelling place in the womb of our Blessed Mother for his divine Son. So that's the first thought. And then it goes on to say, Grant, we pray, that as thou didst preserve her from all stain of sin by the foreknowledge of his death. So why was our Blessed Mother conceived without stain of sin? Or how was that earned, you might say, that privilege? It was by the future death of our Lord on the cross that she was given that privilege of her Immaculate Conception. And then finally we pray that by her intercession, we may come to thee with pure hearts. 
right now in the seminary, we've been reading the autobiography of the little flower, St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, the story of a soul. Such a beautiful work. So many different thoughts, different um, reflections. But we're at the very, very end, and yesterday we read the part where she made the comment, she said, I thank God that I have been preserved from mortal sin in my life. Now, she wrote that shortly before her death. What a wonderful thing to pray for, for our children who have never offended God by mortal sin. Say to him today, with our blessed mother's help, I will never offend you, dear God, by a mortal sin. And anyone who has ever committed a mortal sin, we must say, never, ever, ever again will I offend God by a mortal sin. And I will also strive to avoid venial sin, which also offends Almighty God. But above all, let us have a dread of mortal sin, the greatest evil in the world. And so the collect concludes by those prayers, by that petition, that through Our Lady, through her intercession, through her purity, we might be able to approach Almighty God with pure minds and pure hearts. Let us pray for that on this beautiful feast of our dear Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.